Slips, uh, they don't just look cool. They're actually very effective in helping you get your airplane slow down so don't use up all 4,000 feet of the runway. Listen, I, um, I consider myself a pretty, I'm, I guess I'm a pretty average pilot, um, but there's a lot of flight training that goes on at my airport. And even today I was up just doing some pattern work and uh, I understand we all have, we were, we're all new at some point and we're all learning to fly and that's fine. But when I routinely see like 152s, 172s, Cherokees um, using all 4,000 feet of the runway uh, and going all the way down to the end of the runway, you know, it kind of makes me scratch my head a little bit. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of people holding short. I mean, there's a lot of people in the pattern doing flight training. So it's not like it's an empty airport and they're just gonna roll down to the end because they can. It seems like they're actually using all 4,000 feet of the runway because they need it. Uh, which is fine, right? If you're learning, if you're just learning how to fly, uh, that's completely fine. I'm not trying to say that that it's a bad thing, um, but you know, at some point, you have to start looking at it like, hey, you know, what am I doing wrong here? And is there anything that I could do uh, to maybe fix it? You could go around, sure. Um, but one thing that I like to do, and you could do this further on in your flight training, or I'm sure those that actually fly routinely, especially the tail draggers, probably do this all the time. Uh, but you could do a slip, a forward slip, uh, to bleed off airspeed really quickly. All right, let's say you're coming in really fast. I mean, yeah, you could obviously go around. That's always an option. It's a good option. Or you could just put the airplane in a forward slip, aerodynamic braking, bleed off some airspeed, and then drop it in. And again, you're going to have to refer to your POH because some airplanes you can slip with full flaps, some airplanes you can't. Uh, my airplane doesn't have flaps, so it's not an issue, but just something to be aware of. All right, now here's some uh, GPS data here to back it up. I'll do a, a landing with a slip, one without a slip, to kind of show you um, how easy it is to boot off the airspeed. All right, so the... Um this is not an exact science, but it's pretty close. The GPS data, it, remember, it's not airspeed. Um, it's GPS data off of the GoPro. So it's a, it's pretty accurate, but it, it might be off by a couple miles an hour. Um, and the digital on the left, a 931.8, that's how long it took me uh, to land without doing a slip, which is this first approach here. And the second one, which I'll show you, which is 492, that's slipping to, to bleed airspeed. So uh, here you go. All right, so power's at idle. Coming down as fast as I can. So I just touched 80, power to idle. Let's see how long it takes us. I'll wheel it on right there. So, all right, I mean, it wasn't really a big deal. You saw where we touched down. All right, and here's the fun part. We're not doing a slip during the approach. I'm just going to do a slip once I'm in ground effect um, to show you how much quicker we bleed off airspeed this way. So we're doing about 80. All right, power to idle, put it in a slip. And touchdown. And here's the approach into 3 one Allens, and you'll see why this is a great airport to just practice slips in general, uh, because there's power lines as well as trees, uh, and this is a just perfect, perfect airport where you would need a slip to, to get down over this obstacle. Um, but this is just to show you uh, the airplane in a slip, in ground effect, and again, this for those asking, this is a Insta360 1X4 360 camera, uh, and it gives pretty awesome views. And here's just kind of a top bottom side comparison. The one up top is the slip where you can just watch the airspeed indicator start to, to bleed off a little bit quicker than the one on the bottom where you just naturally let it bleed off airspeed and ground effect. You can use a slip to not only descend without flaps or with flaps to increase your descent rate without increasing airspeed, but it's a really great tool to use when you roll out on final, you're over the numbers and you're really fast, uh, go ahead and put the airplane in a slip to bleed off some airspeed. 
There's really no downside to that. Uh, you got to watch the wingtip, sure, and I don't think every single approach you should be at the point where you're super fast or super high and you need to slip, but you should have the ability to use that as a tool to help slow you down if you need to. Uh, what if you ha what if you have an emergency and you, there's a field in front of you and you can get down, you know, but but you're really fast. You can't go around. That's not an option. So you could put the airplane in a slip to bleed off airspeed really quickly. Uh, just kind of pointing it out that, you know, I feel like in the training environment, all these flight schools, there's a lot of ATP airplanes that are here, and I'm not calling out ATP, but. A lot of these flight schools, they're kind of these pilot factories and they're just trying to get you through so you can be an airline pilot because, you know, an airline pilot is the greatest thing in the world, right? Um, so here's kind of what I was talking about. I went on Google and searched, you know, training to become an airline pilot or become a professional pilot. And the recurring theme that I see through all of these programs, uh, and it's no fault of their own because they're just providing what people are asking for, is kind of zero to airline pilot in X amount of months. That seems to be the priority. Now, full disclosure, I have never gone through any of these programs. Uh, i I'm sure they do a fantastic job. The airplanes are well kept. The curriculums are great. The instructors are, are, are good and knowledgeable. I'm not saying that they fail in any of those regards, but I just think the way the program is designed, some of that stick and rudder flying um, that you would probably be more inclined to be doing if this was training in the 1930s and 40s kind of goes by the wayside because the priority here is just kind of checking the boxes and, and, and getting the, the times and qualifications to go to the airlines. Um, now, again, I could be wrong. So for those that have gone through those programs, uh, please let me know. But I just feel like some of that stick and rudder stuff is kind of lacking. And I think it's important to be able to, to have those stuff. And again, not because you're going to be slipping an Airbus or a 737, but if you're out flying around in a general aviation airplane, um, these are skills that I think may benefit you and potentially could, could save your life. And that's kind of why I, I harp on them as, as much as I do. And I think there's a lot to be said for, you know, procedures, checklist flows, being stable at a thousand feet, because, in, you know, at the airlines, if you're not stable by a thousand feet, and I'll show you all the things that you have to hit in order to be stable by a thousand feet, if you don't hit all those, those gates, so to speak, you have to go around and it's mandatory. For anyone interested, this is very general, but this is uh, more or less what you can expect to see in a 135 or 121 FOM somewhere, um, kind of laying down what is considered a stabilized approach criteria. Each airline is different, but this is generally what it would look like. And that's fine, and I get that, and I'm not promoting doing anything outside of that at the airlines, but I think when it comes to general aviation flying, I think you should have the skill, the knowledge, and the ability to at least get the airplane slowed down via using a slip, because I think it's a lot better to have these skills and not need them than to need them and not have them. I'm not saying every single approach you have to put the Cherokee or the 172 in, 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 in a slip to get it slowed down, but wouldn't it be nice to maybe use that as a tool instead of using all 4,000 feet of the runway? Um, and again, if you're a new student, I'm not suggesting that. I'm just saying maybe further on in your training or if you're a private pilot, whatever the case, maybe go out with an instructor uh, and just practice that because you'll be amazed at how easy it is to just put the airplane in a slip. And it's not like, you know, flaps, some airplanes you can slip with full flaps, some you can't. You just refer to your POH. But, you know, when it comes to flaps, you know, you got to select them and then it takes a little while for them to come down. You retract them, it takes a little while for them to come up. In a slip, you just, you know, put your feet in and as quickly as you put it in is as quickly as you can come out. You don't need to do anything other than just move your feet and your hands uh, to use aerodynamic braking. So I'm kind of rambling for a, a bit, but. Again, you know, my channel is not to just show you the beauty of general aviation flying and tail draggers, but to maybe think about um, getting back into that stick and rudder flying to be able to have all of these tools uh, to use if you need to. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for watching.